Welcome back to The Art of Natural Beauty, episode number 16. Hey guys, welcome back to The Art of Natural Beauty. Today I thought we'd talk a little bit about a topic that is really an integral component of the film capture process. And if you're just getting into shooting film, you're going to want to pay close attention because it's a law that is going to determine the outcome of your exposure, especially when we're talking about and dealing with longer exposure times. That's really when this comes into play. I may have done some research on this topic and read a little bit about it. It may seem uh, like a little bit of a complicated uh, law. However, I'm here to tell you that it's actually a very simple law. And once you get the understanding and the hang of it, uh, it's going to be something that you're going to be applying to your photography uh, without, without a second thought. And if you do, uh, as I've done, and create some cheat sheets and keep those uh, with you in your camera bag, it's going to be something that you're going to be able to easily refer to time and time again when you're in the field. And that is the law or the relationship of reciprocity and the breakdown of reciprocity, which is known as reciprocity failure. So what reciprocity is, is a relationship between the amount or intensity of light and the amount of time the light is exposed to light sensitive materials, such as our film. And it's a inversely proportionate relationship. So what that means, it's a relationship between variables. And as one variable, say our aperture would increase, the, the, the size of our aperture increases, uh, allowing more light into uh, our camera body to strike our film then the shutter speed, the value of the shutter speed, will decrease the amount of time that light is let in. Now this makes perfect sense if, if you've been shooting for a while, you understand the concept of the more light that comes into the camera, the less time you need to expose your light sensitive material to, and, and vice versa, the, the smaller an aperture or the less amount of light or the intensity of light that you allow in say to control depth of field, to get more depth of field, the more time you're going to need to let that light in to expose those light sensitive materials to get a proper exposure. So that's reciprocity, this, this inverse uh, variable, uh, purport, inversely proportionate variable. Uh, reciprocity failure is, occurs when there's a breakdown in that relationship. So when um, you need more time then is determined to expose your photographically sensitive, your light sensitive materials, that's, that's a breakdown in this relationship. You're not going to uh, be able to change your aperture setting because you've decided on a certain aperture based on the look and feel uh, that you need for your photograph. You want a lot of depth of field. You want things sharp from your foreground all the way through to your background. So you've chose an aperture based on the uh, correct depth of field to render the image the way you need it to. Now, when you take a, a meter reading based on that aperture, you're going to get a, a set uh, a, a set shutter speed based on that based on that aperture. As there's less light available, that shutter speed is going to need to increase, but that aperture but that aperture isn't going to change. So there's a breakdown in the relationship. And we're really talking about film here. Uh, this isn't something that occurs in digital photography. Um, the film, every film is different, and those photons that are on that film are going to respond to light differently. So as, as light is decreased, the amount and the uh, intensity of the light is decreased, it's going to take more time to evenly expose those photons on the film. When you have enough light... Uh, to come in and expose those photons evenly, it, it, it's not gonna. You're, you're not gonna need to apply the reciprocity uh, adjustment because there's enough light there present uh, for the aperture and for the shutter speed that's selected to correctly expose all those photons evenly on the film. 
But when there isn't enough light, like in the morning, if you're shooting it at dawn or dusk, or in the evening, in, in the twilight hours, or if you're stacking up uh, ND grad and ND filters to create a longer exposure for an effect, you're decreasing the amount of light that is hitting the photons on that film. So when that relationship breaks down uh, and the variables cannot inversely counter each other, reciprocity failure occurs. So every film is different, as I've said, and what I've done is I've created some cheat sheets here so I have them on hand with me based on the different various films that I use. So mainly I'm shooting with Velvia, it's uh, my, my film of choice, but at times I'll also shoot with Kodak Ektar depending on the situation. And when you look at the, the uh, exposure compensations and the reciprocity breakdown on these films, they are very different. So you're going to want to know what that reciprocity breakdown uh, time frame is for each film. And again, you're going to probably want when you're starting out to have some cheat sheets like this on hand. Now, it's a good practice to get this locked into your head so you don't have to refer to these charts as often. But it's always a great idea to have something like this on hand to refer to. So we'll take uh, some examples here. We'll look at Fuji Velvia since that's my film of choice and the one I'm shooting with 99% of the time. And Fuji Velvia begins to really break down when you make an exposure of four seconds and longer. Uh, less than four seconds, you're good. You're within the normal range, the reciprocity levels in the relationship of Velvia. But when you make an exposure of four seconds or longer, breakdown occurs, and thus you're going to have to allow more time for that, that lesser intensity of light to expose evenly all of the photons on the film. So in this example of four seconds, say we get an indicated uh, reading of four seconds on our light meter, we're actually going to need to uh, apply another second to that, and your corrected exposure time would be five seconds. So as we increase the amount of time that we need to make a proper exposure, you get to a point where you're almost doubling the time that's necessary to make the exposure correctly on Fuji Velvia. So if we jump down to 20 seconds here, we see that our corrected time, a corrected exposure time is 39 seconds, so almost 40 seconds. So we've gone from 20 to almost 40. So we've doubled the amount of time it's necessary to correctly expose all those photons on Fuji Velvia. If we jump down to here to a minute, almost a minute, we're at 64 seconds. We need 158 seconds to, to correctly expose that film. So now we've doubled it and, and added another half second into the equation. So uh, as you can imagine, there's going to be a point that you're going to hit the wall and the film is just not going to respond very well. So it's really recommended that you don't go over uh, an exposure that's four to five seconds long. Uh, at that point, you're kind of into a little bit uncharted territory. Uh, you can experiment with that, and I would encourage you to do so if, if you're looking to get some star trails or something like that at night, but may not be the, the, the right film for you to use. So uh, definitely something that I recommend having on hand. I'll put a, a link in the description below to some of these charts so you can print them out yourself or just do a Google search for reciprocity failure of Fuji Velvia or Kodak Ektar or Portra or whatever it is you're shooting with. Um, and great thing to have in the backpack. I, I still refer to this, um, I, I have it in my head, but I still refer to this from time to time if um, you know I haven't been out shooting for a while. So. That is uh, basically all I wanted to touch on today. Um, I hope that uh, this kind of demystifies uh, the, the topic and the law of reciprocity and reciprocity failure. Uh, now you can start to see why it is an integral component of your film capture process. It's something you're going to need to know uh, when you're shooting film and uh, certainly certainly a very, uh, a very important component to to uh, apply because if you forget to apply this uh, then your film will not be exposed correctly 
Now, something you could do if you've realized uh, after you've made the capture that you neglected to apply reciprocity uh, failure into the compensate to compensate for that into the equation is you can uh, you can actually push your development times a little bit longer. So if you've forgotten to apply this, you could ask the uh, uh, the lab to actually push maybe another stop or two on, on your film to allow that to develop a little bit longer and you may be able to pull something out of that. Uh, I, I've done that in the past where I haven't made the exposure to the correct amount of time. My um, I realized it later on. I asked the lab to push it a stop and it came out pretty good. Um, but the longer you push certain films, say, uh, Velvia, for instance, since uh, we're going to talk, I talk about that a lot. That's the film I use. The contrast your your film is going to get. So it may be something that you like. It may be effect that you like when you get the film back to have a, a nice contrasty film. Velvia is already contrasty as it is. It's already very color saturated. So this is just going to add on top of that what you would normally get. But if there's if you're in a pinch. You shot something, you really like the composition, things were coming together, you forgot to calculate for a reciprocity failure, or you didn't quite expose the film to the correct amount of time that's necessary under normal processing conditions, you can try to push that development process another stop or two. I wouldn't uh, recommend going beyond two stops with, with Fuji Velvia and Color Slide film. So that's going to kind of wrap it up for today. Um, again, I hope this helps demystify uh, this, this uh, topic of reciprocity for you. And um, if you have any questions or comments uh, pertaining to reciprocity and reciprocity failure, uh, please add them below, ask away. Um, if there's any topics that you would like me to talk about in the future that uh, I can touch on for you, uh, please let me know. Give me some ideas for some, for some new topics. Um, and as always, I, I thank you for your support. I thank uh, all you new subscribers out there. And I want to thank all of you subscribers that have been with me for a long time. Uh, and I would encourage you to get out and shoot. And until next time, enjoy the art of natural beauty.